So now we're back at our farm with all of our equipment back down here. We have our fields. We have to get ready to lime one field and plow another. So we have our subsoiler attached to our tractor here. We're going to get into our tractor. Remember that this field this field needs to be plowed. This field 19 needs to have, needs to have lime. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to plow this field. Now the subsoiler being wider than a plow is going to allow us to actually do this a lot quicker. It's four meters wide as opposed to two or two and a half meters wide. So we're going to be able to plow this field a lot quicker than if we were to actually use just a plow. Now we're having to do this. Now this cotton is ready to be harvested, but since we're not going to be able to harvest this cotton, it doesn't really matter that we're plowing it up out of the ground. So we're going to continue our passes, we're going to continue to plow this until all the cotton's gone and the entire field has been plowed. Then we're going to move over and we are going to lime our field 19. So now we have finished plowing our field, so what we're going to want to do next is put our plow up and then go lime our other field. So we're going to take our plow over here to our vehicle shed, our subsoiler, it's not actually a plow. We're going to drop it off and now we're going to go attach to our fertilizer spreader. Well, it's a lime spreader right now. So here it is sitting over on field 19. So now we are going to spread our lime. Now yes, these potatoes that we have here, they are actually ready to be harvested, but we're just going to spread our lime on top of them, and then we're going to plant our seeds directly on top of these potatoes, because potatoes require special harvesting equipment, and we do not have it, and it's rather expensive, so we are not going to be able to harvest these potatoes. Now our lime spreader... It has a width of 12 meters, so it's actually spreading a decent amount. So it's not going to take too many passes to do this field. Come back for another pass. So once we are done putting down lime on this field, then we're going to be ready to plant our fields. So we're going to finish doing this, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to start planting our fields. So now we are finished spreading our lime. So now what we're going to need to do is go put our spreader up and get our cedar. So we're going to come over here to our vehicle shed. We don't actually have another spot to put our spreader in, so we're going to leave it right here. We're going to come get our cedar. We're going to pull our cedar out here. Now I am going to put our spreader up because I just don't want it sitting in the middle of our fields.
So now our spreader is put up. So now we're going to get our cedar. And we're going to take it over here to these sunflowers. Now we're going to be able to seed directly on top of them. That's why we bought this cedar, so that we don't have to cultivate the ground. So we're going to unfold our cedar, drive up to the edge, going to lower our cedar, turn it on, and then we're going to go down the field. So as you can see, the sunflowers are disappearing behind us, and our ground is being sown. This is the reason why we bought this cedar, because it makes life a lot easier, especially when you have crops that you can't harvest and we no longer need. Also, every time we harvest our fields, instead of having to use a cultivator and make our ground fertile to plant again, we can just take this cedar and drive directly on top of it. Now this cedar being six meters wide, isn't going to take us that long to seed all of our fields. That's why we went with the upgraded seeder. So now we're going to finish this. We're going to have to do all four of our fields. We're going to be able to drive directly over that canola just like we did the sunflowers. And we're going to be able to drive directly over top of our potatoes. So once we get done with all of that, then we're going to have to come back we're going to have to speed time a little bit until we get some plants showing out of the ground and then we're going to need to spread our fertilizer. We're actually going to need to spread fertilizer twice so we can actually spread it before our plants appear out of the ground. So we're going to come back and spread our fertilizer once we get done seeding and then we're going to speed time and then we're going to fertilize again. The reason we have to fertilize twice is because each time you fertilize you get a 25% yield boost. So if we fertilize twice, we get a 50% yield boost. Now when you put down lime every three times you harvest, that's another 15%. So we can actually increase our yields by 65% by fertilizing and by spreading lime. Now with our four fields here, 65% increase in crops is going to be a 65 percent increase in the amount of money that we can make. So since we only have four fields, we're going to need every bit that we can possibly get. So that's why we're going to make sure to fertilize and lime our fields. So we're going to finish up doing our seeding and then we're going to come back and we're going to spread our fertilizer. So now we have finished seeding all of our fields, we've put our cedar away, but if we come to soil composition, we see that field 24 actually needs to be lined. So we're going to have to do that real quick before we go back to the shop and pick up our fertilizer. Now we can see field 26 is halfway fertilized, but field 25 and field 19 are actually completely fertilized. So we're only gonna have to fertilize field 26. You can see here the light blue is 50%, the dark blue is 100%. Now we can check that by coming over next to a field and it will show us this field is 50% fertilized and it's growing wheat because we planted wheat. So if we come over to this field, it shows that we are 100% fertilized. So what we're going to need to do is now we're going to have to spread our lime on field 24. And then once we're done with that, we're going to have to drive back to the store, empty our spreader and fill it back up with fertilizer. So here we start to lime this field. 
We're going to do this real quick. And then we're going to drive back to the store. We're going to empty our spreader and we are going to fill it back up with fertilizer. Then we are going to come back and fertilize our one field that needs to be fertilized. So now we're back at the shop. We got our fertilizer in front of us. So what we're going to need to do is unload our lime from our spreader. So now our lime is unloaded, sitting in our big bags over there to the right. So now we come over here and we need to fill up our fertilizer. So we open our cover and we start filling. As you can see, the levels are going up. Three more bags to go. So now we have 6,000 fertilizer. So we close our cover. And now we're going to drive back to our farm. So now we're back to our farm with our fertilizer. We check and see that field 24 and 26 both are 50% fertilized, so they're both going to need to be fertilized. So we're on field 24. We're going to fertilize it first. See our fertilizer spreading behind us. It's covering a good portion of the field. That 12 meter diameter really does pretty well for our small fields. We're going to turn around and come back for our next pass. Now once we get done fertilizing these fields, we're going to need to speed time for a little while until our plants are showing out of the ground. Then we're going to have to watch our soil composition and see when our plants are going to need to be weeded. That's the next step after our fertilizing. So we complete our fertilizing process, then we speed time, and then we check for when we need to be weeded. Alright, so we have sped time and now all of our fields need to be weeded. So we've got the weeder attached to the tractor. We're going to drive it over here to our field 26. We're going to do that field first. We're going to unfold our weeder. This thing has a pretty large span. Let's line it up with the edge of our field. That looks pretty good. Turn some lights on. It's still not quite daylight. We're going to start weeding our fields. Now you really can't tell much difference behind them as they're weeding. It doesn't really, you can see some weeds appearing in the front and you can see the weeder getting rid of them. But there's no real big difference behind our weeder. So we're going to come back and keep doing this. We're going to have to do this for all four of our fields and once this is done we can wait for our fields to be ready to be harvested. Now I slowed time down back to real time so that we could do this. I had time on fast forward 120. That's how we made it through the night. Now there's three growth stages to our crops. The first growth stage they just stick out of the ground a little bit Then the second growth stage they look like this. The third growth stage, they're going to be a little larger, and then the fourth stage is actually harvesting. So we still have one stage to go in our growing process, two actually if you include going to harvesting. So while we do this, we could speed time and we could make it through our next growth stages, but I don't like to do that because 
we might not get everything weeded before it becomes time to harvest our crops. And if we don't get it weeded before it's time to harvest, then we lose our opportunity to weed our field. But we can see the weeds. We can see them growing in our field. So we are getting rid of those. Luckily, this is not a long process. Our weeder is pretty wide, so we can actually cover a decent amount of ground in each pass. So it looks like one more pass on this field, and then we will have this field completely weeded. If you come back to your start menu, you can see that our field is fertilized. It is 100% fertilized. It is dark blue. And our pink is going away because we are getting rid of our weeds. So we're going to continue to do this for our other three fields. And then when we get done with that, we are going to speed time until our crops become able to be harvested. Then we're going to slow time down back to real time. And then we're going to harvest our crops. So we're going to have to do one more pass after this one. You see we have five sunflowers left over there that we never managed to actually get out of the ground. So we're going to have to make sure to get those when we go and seed our ground again. Now they're not really causing that big of a problem. There's only five of them. But we missed them, so we're going to have to make sure that we get them the next go around. So these are just showing you all the stages that we have to go through until we can harvest our crops. Let's see how crop destruction turned off, otherwise driving through our field like that would actually destroy some of our crops and we do not want to do that because we are going to need every bit that we can get since we only have our four little fields we got to get the highest yield that we can possibly get so that we can make the money to buy the things that we weren't able to buy in the beginning, like a farmhouse and a silo. So now we're finished with this field. So now we're going to move on and do the rest of our fields. And then we're going to speed time and ready, get everything ready to be harvested. And then we're going to come back and harvest our fields. Now our fields are ready to be harvested. We have our trailer and our tractor together, and now we're in our harvester. So we're going to start over here on field 19. It's the biggest field we own, so maybe we can fill up our harvester with this one field. Remember that this harvester holds 8,600 grain in its grain tank. I really wish this tree wasn't here. It's very annoying. You can't really see what you're doing. We're going to start right here. And now we have begun to harvest our fields. You can see in the bottom right hand corner we are harvesting wheat and it is slowly filling up. So hopefully we can get 16 to 20,000 grain out of all four of our fields. That would be good. Now well, let's check the price of wheat right now. Click on it. So the port grain elevator is offering $752. That's actually a really good price for wheat. So hopefully we can sell it at $752 when we get done harvesting it. Yeah, $752 is a really good price for it actually. So now we know what our grain is going to be worth. So now we just have to harvest it all. That one pass got a 1645.
We actually made straw on that run. I did not know our straw swath was turned on. So we could collect that straw, but that's going to take a loading wagon. We might have the money to buy a loading wagon, but straw is pretty much worthless. Like, a full loading wagon is not going to get you very much. In terms of money. We turn the straw swath off. Now we'll be able to go over top of that with our cedar, so it's not going to be a problem. But yeah, straw is basically worthless. Like a loading wagon that holds 60,000 straw is going to be worth about $4,000. So our loading wagons, if we go check on them, We can get this small loading wagon for $46,000. This loading wagon can only hold 23,000 liters. So it's going to take us 15, 20 loads of straw to make our money back. So even though we can make straw, at this point in the game, we're not going to, and honestly, there's never really a point to make straw. Now, if you have animals that require straw, like cows and pigs and horses, well, then it's ideal to make straws, because that way you can put it to use and you're not trying to just sell it. So really, until we have animals, there's no real use for straw. So we've collected 4,200 grains so far, so we're doing pretty good. A harvester only moves at six miles per hour down the field. Like the harvester itself can drive about 25 miles per hour, but once you attach a header and you start to harvest, your speed is actually determined by your header. See this header speed, six miles per hour. Header speed, six miles per hour. Six miles per hour, nine miles per hour. Ours is six miles per hour. So that's as fast as we're gonna get our harvester to go. So once our harvester fills up, we're going to need to bring our tractor and trailer and unload our harvester. Now when it gets full, it's going to stop harvesting and the pipe is going to come out. Now I am using a helper. I've been using a helper this whole time so our money has been going down. But using helpers really helps me out because they can drive in perfectly straight lines and they can use the entire width of our machinery all at one time. Every pass by pass there's no missing in between them. Now sometimes they do miss some grain. Like we can see back behind us, they missed that section right there. So once they get done, we're going to have to go back and get it ourselves. But you do not have to use a helper. You can do it all yourself. I just use helpers because I've played this game so much that it's just far more convenient for me to use a helper than go up and down the fields, up and down the fields. Now our grain tank is getting almost full. It's got 7,500 in it. So maybe on this next pass it'll fill up our tank and we'll be able to unload this harvester. Just a few more passes on this field, and this field will be completely harvested. So here we go. Let's see how fast we can fill up this harvester. 
79, 8,000. We got 600 grain more to go. It's getting there rather quickly. So we're going to fill up this harvester with this one field, and then we're still going to have more grain come off of this field once we unload this. So now we switch back to our tractor with our trailer attached. And we're going to drive over and underneath the pipe and it's going to unload the harvester into our trailer. So now it's unloading. You can see at the bottom right, our trailer is now filling up with wheat. Once our trailer is full, we're going to move it out of the way and let our harvester continue its job. And our job now is basically to drive our trailer underneath the harvester every time it gets full. If you're driving the harvester, just stop it where it stops, because it will stop automatically. It will pull its header up and it will quit harvesting and the pipe will come out. So then you switch to your tractor and you just unload your harvester like we did just there. So now we're going to finish harvesting all of our fields and then we're going to take our grain and we are going to sell it. So now we're done harvesting our fields. Our trailer actually has 28,617 grain in it. So it made a lot more grain than I thought it was going to make. So that's actually a very good harvest that we got. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to port grain elevators at 750. So we know we need to go to the port grain elevator. Yeah, that's the highest price. So we expand our map, find the port grain elevator, and then we're going to drive our tractor over there to it and unload our harvest and make our first bit of money. Let's see how much money we actually brought in off of this wheat. Now normally I like to plant soybeans, and the reason I plant soybeans is they yield less of a harvest, but soybeans are worth so much more money. A thousand liters of soybeans on a bad day is worth $14,000. On a good day, it's worth seventeen dollars to $18,000. Now our wheat here is worth seven fifty, dollars And also, we had a red arrow next to that telling us that the price is going down. So we might only get seven forty nine dollars or seven forty eight dollars by the time that we get to the port grain elevator. So with soybeans, off of that field, we probably would have produced... 16 to 20,000 liters of soybeans. So at the price that soybeans go for, we would actually have made more money than if we had just said then we just did this wheat. So we will look at the price of soybeans once we arrive at the elevator. So that way I can show you the actual comparison against them. So first we're going to need to dump this and get our actual price value that we got out of this trailer full of wheat. So now we're going up a hill pulling a loaded trailer so we're only going 13 miles an hour. This game is very realistic in that aspect. Once you start pulling loaded trailers our 25 mile per hour top speed up a hill, it goes away. So we gotta drive all the way over here to the other side of the map to be able to deliver this grain. But we're getting a nice scenic view of the map. We're getting to look at downtown. We're getting to see some nice houses. Let's see what else we can see on our trip. There's a stop sign. You don't have to stop. There's no police in this game. So we got the Tidal View Motel over here to the right. 
We have basketball courts to the left. We have the ocean out there. So we're next to the next to a port town. We are a port town. So here is the Port Green elevator. So now we have to figure out where we take our harvest to get paid for it. We're driving over train tracks. I sure hope a train doesn't come right now. I think it's on the other side of this building. We can find out. Here we go. Here's the entrance. So we pull up over this grate. And now we can unload our wheat. Our price was $7.49 when we got here. So now once we unload our wheat, this price is going to go down further. Well, it didn't actually. We didn't make enough of a difference to actually make the price go down any further. Normally, once you deposit your grain, you actually in, you, you fluctuate the prices because you change the demand for it. So now the poor grain elevator has more wheat, but we didn't have enough of it to really affect the price. So now, pull out of here, and what we're going to check on was those soybeans. Well, right now, actually, soybeans are worth almost nothing. Look at that, eleven seventy-three. These are some of the worst prices I've ever seen for soybeans. So it's a good thing that we did not harvest those. But we would have had less of a yield of soybeans, so we probably would have been able to hold our harvest over in our trailer, speeding time until our prices went up to a decent amount. So $7.49 was a pretty good price for wheat, so we made a decent amount of money. But that's basically it. That's how we farm our fields. Those are all the steps that we take, all the processes we have to go through, start to finish, all the way until we sell our product. So now what we do we return back to our fields and we start the process all over again. Now we have $116,000. So we made about $24,000, $25,000 off of our load of wheat. So we could actually, we could take a bank loan we can still get up to $250,000 for a bank loan. But if we were to do that so that we could buy a farmhouse, we are actually going to only have $16,000 left. So that's not going to be very good for us. And I missed our road because I'm sitting here talking and not watching our map. So now we have to turn around. And head back to our farm. That was the end of the map we just saw there. Can't go any further. Those tunnels are where the map ends. So we're going to come back up through this town, back to our fields. This is our process. This is how we do everything. So when we get back, we start over again.